Welcome to JSA TV, the newsroom for telecom professionals. I'm Dean Perrine, EVP at JSA, and joining me today is Mr. Brad Botts. Brad is the Regional Vice President of Commercial and Carrier Sales at Vive Broadband. Brad, welcome to JSA TV. Thanks, Dean. Uh, excited about being here. Outstanding. So, Brad, I can't help but notice the uh, the credenza behind you. It, it's a little bare. Are you just moving in or just moving out? Well, we're getting ready to move out. So, uh, you know, our kids are now adults and we're looking to downsize. And so uh, in the process of, of that hecticness, so we're uh, trying to balance work life at this point. I get it. I get it. Well, congratulations on becoming sort of the empty nesters and uh, and living, living your best lives. So I appreciate your being here today. Yes, uh, but, but Brad, uh, let's go ahead and jump right in. Uh, for our viewers that don't already know, why don't you tell them a little bit about Vibe Broadband and more importantly, the commercial and carrier sales group. What does the group uh, do and, and how does it ultimately fit into uh, the, the Vibe organization? Thanks, Dean. Uh, you know, Vibe Broadband is a uh, rural broadband cable internet provider uh, that services a little over 300 communities in 16 states across the U.S. Um, you know, we're, we're really broken up into three segments from a commercial, uh, from a customer perspective. You know, we got the consumer side, the commercial side, and then the carrier side. And so I'm obviously involved in both uh, commercial and the carrier. Uh, you know, from a commercial perspective, we offer, you know, internet speeds up to 10 gigabit. On the residential side, it's up to one gig. So we're really beefing up, you know, our broadband capabilities in these underserved rural communities. As we're finding out, uh, you know, those folks need more bandwidth in order to do business and live okay. and work, uh, you know, today. Um, you know, in terms of the commercial, you know, we, we do things such as hosted voice as well as uh, cloud services. So we're not just an internet cable company. So we're trying to expand our, our footprint. We're a little bit over 12,000 fiber miles and growing. And so uh, that obviously helps us on the carrier side in, in terms of partnering with with uh, other carrier partners and, and getting our footprint expanded. I love it. So uh, let's uh, staying on that theme with uh, the expansion and stuff. I understand that your um, that your carrier sales group has had uh, has experienced some significant growth uh, in recent years. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that growth and what how, you know how you might attribute it? Yeah, thank you. I think, you know, it's really broken up into four areas of focus. So when I took over the group in 2019, when I came aboard, you know, we had roughly 20 partners at that time, which is which is pretty, pretty solid. But, you know, in the carrier space, you know, you typically want to expand to as many as possible up to 100. So we're at that point where we have about uh, growing close to 70 partnerships now over the last couple of years. And that's really done through you know, trying to expand upon our existing relationships that we had, mm -hmm. as well as really trying to onboard and recruit new partners and really get them to know who Vive is. Um, so obviously we're in rural communities, so not a lot of folks know about us. And so really um, trying to promote us and our capabilities. The second area of focus was really around becoming more involved in the carrier community. Mm -hmm. And how you do that is really through a couple of angles is obviously marketing, but also um, having a presence at these carrier events. So there's multiple carrier shows that go on, you know, in, in our industry. And, and a couple that we're heavily involved in is ITW that was just recently in Washington, D.C. Yep. And then upcoming here in Denver at Encompass. Um, those are the two that, that we really focus in on and, you know, having a presence there, building relationships, meeting new partners, letting folks know about our capabilities. Um, and so that's really helped, you know, grow those and expand those relationships. The third thing is, you know, there is a database out there in the carrier world called Connect Base and MasterStream. Those are two heavy, you know, platforms that allow really any carrier partner to find out where you're at, you know, what markets you service, what communities you service, what addresses are serviceable on net, near net. And so we've been able to expand our database and our presence on those platforms to allow, you know, carriers to go and see, you know, where they, they could offer service, where we can offer services and provide them quotes. And the last thing is, is when, when you know, in 2019, we had literally one carrier pop and I in Dallas. And since then, we've expanded to six and soon to be seven. And really what a carrier pop is allows us to have an NNI or a network-to-network -network interface with our carrier partners. 
And that's how we do business with them. And so just allowing them more presence across our 16 states, being closer you know, to where their connectivity is at and their needs are, and really making it easier for them to do business with us. Yeah, I love it. Um, you know, it really does sound like it's a win-win for, for you and your, your carrier partners. But really quickly, uh, did you enjoy ITW being face-to-face this year? I did. And, uh, you know, I, I got the gift of COVID. Uh, I, I was exposed <laughs> to COVID. Luckily, I'm vaccinated. So uh-huh. I think I got my second booster uh, naturally. But uh, no, it was a great event. You know, last year was really difficult with, with the, you know, being right in the pandemic. I think there was only about 700 participants mm-hmm. this year. There was closer to four or 5,000. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was just a hopping in place. And, uh, you know, it was good to see folks again and, and get back out you know, traveling. Yeah. Yeah. No, I felt, I felt exactly the same way with all those people. I didn't actually run into you, but um, you know, it was, uh, it was nice to be there uh, face to face again, fully vaxxed, fully boosted. Uh, Everything went well for me. So that's, that's good. But uh, back to Vibe Broadband. Uh, Let's talk a little bit about your network. I have read a great deal um, over really the last couple of months about your fiber uh, access networks, the fan networks um, and some great builds and some things that are, that are um, helping to bring like like meaningful transfer transformative um, broadband services to some of those rural rural easy for me to say right communities where you guys serve. So can why don't you tell us a little bit about that network and ultimately um, you know it's in it, its importance to the commercial and carrier customers. Yeah, so you know we were formed really through three companies, you know Northwood Communications, Vive Broadband, as well as Eagle Communications, and so. You know, we came together in forces and we found in particular like our Eagle markets are, are highly penetrated with fiber, whereas the North one wasn't so much. And so we really identified 25 markets across the 16 states that were really uh, poor in fiber. Um, and so we beefed up that infrastructure, gone ahead and proactively built out the networks. Um, you know, obviously the pandemic taught us that more people need more bandwidth, both at home and at work. And so there was just a, a, a huge pent up demand. Uh, for fiber and gigabit speeds. And so we were able to get those investments, um, you know, from our investors and and uh, we're knee deep into activating those fans as we speak. And that just allows us to offer more uh, serv- serviceable fiber addresses uh, for both our commercial and carrier and our and residential customers, um, as well as really help our rural communities thrive with their business, um, and, and really grow. And that's really what, what they were hindered with was lack of bandwidth, being able to expand their business uh, in, a, in a digital world. Yeah, you know, it's uh, it's interesting. And then one of the reasons why I really uh, wanted to speak with you today is that, you know, prior to the pandemic, you were still out there kind of fighting the good fight and making sure that some of those underserved communities were were getting the bandwidth that they needed to to, you know, to better their business and then just kind of bring their their communities a bit more into the digital world. And then the pandemic happened and we were all working from home and uh, a very, you know, kind of dispersed workforce. And so that that um, that reliable, truly robust bandwidth uh and, and, and connection was necessary all over the place. And so it probably kind of turbocharged your mission a little yeah. bit, uh, which is why we were kind of, uh, we had our fingers uh, on um, kind of the pulse of what was happening there at Vibe Broadband. So thank you uh, for being with me today. I really appreciate it. And for our viewers that would like to know more about Vibe Broadband, where can they go? Yeah, we, we have a website, much like everyone, at www.vibebroadband.com. And we have a landing page for carrier uh, as well as commercial and residential. So you can get more detailed information there. And obviously you can connect with me on LinkedIn uh, and I'll be more than happy to have a conversation with you. Awesome, Brad. Thank you so much for being here today. We really appreciate it. And thank you viewers for watching JSA TV. We'll see you soon. 